20 bucks. 20 bucks. They're on the line for 20 bucks. You keep on playing, but nobody's paying. Hi guys, Jabor. Hope everything's well where you are, and you're safe, and you're warm, and well. So, thank you everybody for tuning in tonight, uh, Mrs. Calabash Cooks and Maggie. And tonight we're going to be making some garlic mushrooms. It makes a nice light lunch, uh, a snack, or an evening meal. And I'm just looking outside and it's absolutely calm after the storm of yesterday. Nothing is moving. There's not a bird, there's not a leaf. It's so be calm. So let's be cool. Take a deep breath. <laughs> I think we all need a deep breath. So come over to the kitchen with me. Come on, we're going to do, um, we're going to start the mushrooms. Just let's go over to the kitchen. Make sure I don't trip over the wires. Now, the recipe that we have today um, calls for a pound of mushrooms. I've got half a pound, so I'm going to be making half this recipe. This was one of the most favorite starters when I had the restaurant in France. Uh, people love garlic mushrooms. Now, the mushrooms I got today were, or yesterday were quite large. So I've cut them up. And like everything else, when you cut it, make sure you have a sharp knife. It's well balanced in your hand. Keep the point down like that and just cut through like that. And I liked with the mushrooms, um, I like little button mushrooms. Sometimes I mix uh, different sort of mushrooms together and occasionally at the store, I can get an outer, a little case with all different type of mushrooms in there. And so I like to make a dish like that. The flavors are different. Now we need garlic. I don't have, well, I do have a garlic press. I don't use it very often. And I put salt on the garlic like that. And this acts as an abrasive. So squash the garlic like that. I remember watching uh, French television at lunchtime and there was a fisherwoman she, she really was, she, she had her own fishing fleet and she was quite large. And to smash garlic, she used to just take a fist and go boom, and she could smash a whole bulb, a whole thing of garlic and she'd just go like that, she was incredible. So by having the salt on there, you can bring this down to a puree. And so just keep going round like that in a circle. I like to be able to taste the garlic in this. So I'm leaving mine today just a little bit coarse. Like that. But be careful if you do this with sharp knives. But if you want to do a pureed garlic, then just keep pressing it down like that and it will puree. So I don't, I do have a garlic press. I don't use it because I don't like cleaning it up. And so I always do this. We're going to take this over to the stove and thyme. I've got some thyme here. This, a friend bought this round um, this afternoon with, um, she was very, very kind and bought a little little sack of goodies round for us. So I'm going to use Connie's time. And thank you very much, Connie. We were delighted, very, very, very much touched. And before I forget, I'll just show you. Look, there were some chives, 
and some chocolate in there. So we're going to enjoy those tonight. Thank you, Connie. I'm going to put them on the table in a minute. I had to put them up on the top of the fridge so that the dogs didn't get at them. We have two dogs, they can get anything. So let's take this over here to the stove. And I like to cook my mushrooms in butter. I've started melting a little butter. Come on. Ah. There we are. I'm going to add a drop more, just a little more butter and to because I like all the juice with the with the mushrooms and I want a little bit of pep tonight. <sighs> I'm feeling a bit bland. And so with this dish you can put put in what you like. I mean today I'm using thyme, you can use oregano, and this is um chili oil. Olive oil with some chilies in it that have been sitting there since um, November. Now, we want to make sure that the butter is nice and hot. That's the secret to cooking mushrooms. Excuse me, I've got an itchy nose. Just let me rinse my hands. This is what the French taught me. Um, always have the butter really hot and and foaming put the mushrooms in otherwise they go soggy so we need to put the mushrooms in like that and i'm going to put the garlic in at this stage because i like the garlic to infuse the mushrooms They don't take long to cook. And at this stage, I'm just going to add a little salt and pepper. And this is uh, Mrs. Calabash Cook's uh, seasoning. Three salt to one pepper. There we are. Just keep stirring that. You don't want it like that. And we have to have some toast. I'm putting them on toast tonight. You can uh, have some nice crispy bread with it, but I like to put it on the toast and let all the juice uh, seep into the toast. So I'm just going to go back to the butcher block. This can keep cooking just to cut some bread and I'm going to cook it in the toasty oven. I don't have a toaster, but I do use my toasty oven. So come back to the butcher block with me, come on. And I've got, this is the end of the loaf, which is great for toast. And I'm going to get a shot when I open this because the bread rose a little bit too much. And so there's a hole between the bread and the crust. So let's use, now because one is much, fresher than the other. This isn't going to toast quite as well as that. There's too much moisture in there. But let's go and just put them in the toaster. Woo! That nearly, nearly went. Let's just go and put this in the toaster. It's on toast, toast, toast. Now, There we are. They're almost cooked. And Connie gave me some fresh thyme. She must have known that I needed some tonight. Mine was, my thyme is, oh, very sad. Very sad, the thyme that I've got. So lovely. I like these to be nice and savoury. But there again, I have a very savoury tough. I prefer savouries to sweet. 
you can use um, you if you don't have any fresh thyme, um, you can put oregano in, or you can you can actually just use um, dried. But just remember, use half the amount of dried that you would the fresh because it's extra strong. I love this. Oh, I don't know if you can hear it. That's the hounds of the Baskerville start. That's Cokey deciding he wants to come and join us. There we are. Let's just taste this to make sure that it's seasoned well enough. I want, I'm going to taste the juice. That's hot. Mm. I'm going to add a little more pepper. I don't need any salt. Just a little pepper in there. And they are the mushrooms. You can see they've not gone soggy. They're just cooked nicely. So let's see how the toast is doing. We've got to wait a little while for the toast. You notice I've got the plate on the top of the toaster. Um, this acts two ways because it gets hot and it gets the plate nice and warm. I'm going to add, a, I haven't got any fresh parsley. My parsley is looking a little bit sick. So just going to add a little dried parsley to that. And that is all there is to making garlic mushrooms. Now we're just waiting for the toast. It'll just be a few minutes. With the toasty oven, I found that the first round of toast doesn't always come out uh, very toasted. But once I switch it off, I'll put another load of toast in and it's nice and toasted. Derek complains. He, he likes... Uh, a toaster but um, growing up we always just used the the broiler we didn't we didn't have such things as toasters when I was little let's have a look uh, as I say the fresh bread um, isn't going to toast very well we'll have to put it in again but um, it's got too much liquid in there it's too fresh too much water so let's just take these over to the butcher block. Just wipe that down. There we are. And that took, what, five, ten minutes max from start to finish. So you can have a really nice meal. Let's go back again. There, it's clicked off. I'll put some butter on that one. And look, you can see how that's toasted. Not much on one side, but a little bit uneven on the other. So come on, let's go back. I need my spoon. I'm not putting any butter on this one because all the butter is going... So you see, there's a rather nice meal. Very simple to make. 
and that is what I enjoy for supper. It also, I found I do garlic mushrooms as an accompaniment to a meal. Just use them as a side. They're great. So there we are, garlic mushrooms. So let's go back and see if anybody's written in. Come on. Let's see which way around I can get. I'm going to bring Connie's delights over with me. See if I can avoid all the wires. Oh, lovely. Hi, Bob. Hope you... Um, okay. This is my friend from Kingston. We met a long time ago and we actually met at a craft show. And Bob makes the most... Well, in those days she was making chocolates and... Um, baskets but she makes um, ornaments out of wool they are absolutely fantastic she she's very very talented uh, but um, we can't see each other owing to the cut you know the shutdown I I can't wait I'm going to eat the hot so I'm going to moan mm. oh yes Mm. Just the right amount of seasoning. Hi, Kate. That's my daughter. Uh, she lives in Osgood. And it's awful because we can't see each other. And we did sort of... She came for the turkey. I put it on the... I put it on the... Um, just put it on the balcony. Um, and then she picked it up and we sort of spoke at a distance but um, it is hard not to, not being able to see the grandchildren and Kate and our friends but I found with um, even though we're retired I found that with uh, the shutdown the isolation I was getting up in the morning because I have to be up early. We have a dog that has a um, an alarm clock in his tummy. And so seven o'clock, regardless, is awake and is very vocal. Uh, it can be sound asleep at five to seven. Seven o'clock, whoa, raring to go. And I used to come down, get everything ready and race around <coughs> getting everything done. Uh, vacuuming, cleaning, making the bread. I found that I don't have to do that to such an extent. I can take things at a calmer pace. And when I wrote about uh, Mrs. Calabash on the uh, on the Facebook page today, um, I mentioned that we've got a, a cedar bush next to the house and we've got a robin, a little robin in there. And he's made a nest and he's been so busy making the nest and he comes up to the windowsill and looks in as much as say come on woman feed me so we put some we put some chopped apple out for him last night and he's now got a mate I saw the female there today so maybe the nest is ready and but he's worn a, a little hole in the tree so you can actually see in, or, or the bush, and you can see in. So hopefully we're going to get some fledglings, and uh, that'll be nice. So we spend hours watching the robin, bringing things back with his in his beak, picking up bits and pieces from the garden, and um, there's plenty in my garden to pick up because uh, I always leave the seeds heads on uh, over winter, and I not take the leaves up, so there's there's plenty for him to pick up. And we're going out for walks. The village is um, pretty deserted. Not a lot of people here. And so it's rather nice just to take a leisurely walk down to the canal and the river and uh, look at everything and just take pace, life at a more leisurely pace. And um, maybe that's what's needed. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Please 
go on to MrsCalabashCooks.com, like and recommend it to a friend. So thank you very much. Be safe. Watch me on Friday, 2 p.m., Mrs. Calabash Cooks, and we're doing some rather interesting dishes. So I'll see you then. Please stay safe and well. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Jabor. I'm going to have a piece of chive.